Hi, hello, my name is Diogo Pacheco, and I'm here to invite you to check our paper bot selection controversy. In the past five years, Brazil had one of the fierce, most contested elections in the period of the history. Like 2018 until 2023, we had the election of the far right Jair Bolsonaro, and then later we have the election of re election of Lula, left candidate. So we have all this polarization going on, we have the murder attempt, of course, we had COVID in between. We have like a cool pattern. So it's a little bit of everything in this time. So it's a very rich period, if you wish, for us that are trying to investigate what's going on. And we try to use social media data. So we collect a lot of, of data from, from Twitter and see what's going on. But like, what else is, is there that should we care about it? Like, I want to show a, a little bit of one video. We have a look at this. What, what do you see is going on here? It can be like, oh, the World Cup final or something, like people celebrate like go or something. Or, but surprisingly or not, this was one piece of misinformation. So people celebrating the arrest you know, of a judge, but this arrest would never happen. So it was just one of fake news that was spread. So Brazil was very, very, very uh, worried about this type kind of thing. So we start looking at the data, but how, how our data look like? Brazil has a, a multi-party system. We have more than 30 uh, parties. We use electronic votes, so every candidate has a, a number associated with. So we track all of this in the two cycles, 2018 and 2023. And we managed to get like this massive data set, almost half a billion tweets related to, to, to Brazilian politics from 13 million accounts. And of course, this data is available anonymized and available for you. And start to look okay. Well, let, let, let's have a look, see what can can we do. There are way more in details in the paper, but let's have a look. In terms of bots, uh, are we getting more and more bots over time? And we try different threshold, and we see like and use of course bottometer light to, to to get the bot score. And you see that somewhat stable throughout the entire time, except during COVID. You can see that there's a huge bump the entire year, not the entire year, but like in a significant part of the year. A lot of misinformation going on and also a lot of bot activity during COVID. And also at the end, after the, the, the election day, we have a huge peak like before the coup. But that was like just the numbers of bots. But how bots were engaging? Are they like talking more, participating more in this conversation? And you can see, like even though the numbers of bots were stable, they will engage way more up. There's an uptrend, like every day they are engaging more and more. That's very, very good. We need to be careful how, how we, we, we capture this bot. And also we saw that the way bots work, at least in this Brazilian conversation, they were very highlighted with numbers of replies. So as, as we have more replies, we have more bot active going on. Or of course, our bot networks. So we try to use some of other techniques to try to detect coordinated uh, uh, accounts, not necessarily bots, but they are acting together. So we try to get users that were sharing the same handle. And we managed to, to, to get like a very uh, large group of suspicious accounts sharing uh, sharing handles of course this is just a teaser please have a look at our paper for more details